in this video, we're going to be uh, discussing and demonstrating uh, high velocity, low amplitude technique for the radial head. Um, and I've obtained consent from my patient. Um, first things first, let's uh, obtain a diagnosis of the radial head. So I'm going to start by uh, supinating and pronating the forearms to um, get a sense of any asymmetry of motion. And what I'm feeling on this left side is that there is a restriction of motion with supination and uh, freedom of motion, or really the motion on both sides is symmetric in pronation. So zeroing in on this one arm and contacting the radial head, um, in supination, I feel that the radial head um, hits a bit of a restrictive barrier as it tries to move anteriorly. And with pronation, I feel like there's uh, uh, good motion of the radial head posteriorly, which suggests that the diagnosis for the radial head is a left radial head posterior. Okay, so now in order to perform HVLA to the radial head, uh, for the, to this diagnosis specifically, uh, what I want to do is take that posterior radial head and move it anteriorly. In order to do that, I'm going to position my thumb on the posterior aspect of that radial head, and I'm going to engage the barrier by inducing supination until I reach a restricted barrier. I can also adjust with a little bit of um, flexion and extension of the elbow to maximize the barrier. So with a little bit more extension, I feel like I'm really maximize that barrier. Um, and now in this position, I'm going to ask my patient to take a nice breath in and out. And one more breath in and out. And then I apply a quick, but um, uh, kind of short uh, thrust. So high velocity, low amplitude thrust on the posterior aspect of the radial head, moving it anteriorly as I also augment the supination. If I was instead treating an anterior uh, radial head, what I would instead do is try to get to the anterior aspect of it so that I can move it posteriorly. So I would come to the anterior aspect of that radial head using, um, using my hand here, using my fingers. And then I would use my other hand to grab the wrist and to pronate to move the radial head into its uh, restricted barrier posteriorly. And um, I would flex the elbow as well to optimize that restricted barrier. And then my thrust in this case would be uh, downwards um, at the radial head while at the same time inducing a little bit of additional uh, uh, flexion at the elbow, which would um, induce some posterior uh, motion of the radio head on this left side. Uh, once that treatment has occurred um, in whichever direction, then I would reassess the radio head by again um, um, making contact to the radio head and then inducing supination and pronation. And following um, the high velocity, low amplitude treatment of that posterior radial head, I do feel that there is some improvement of supination.